never wrote it down. I never thought I would ever know what it would feel like not to be hungry all the time. A year ago, I went all in. Well, what's up everyone, Mariah here and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to be discussing Stephanie Buttermore's all in journey and the video that she has shared with us hitting the one year mark. So I have actually made a video about uh, Stephanie Buttermore and me finding so much strength and encouragement from watching her videos from going all in over the last year. What's really interesting about the story that I'm going to be telling you today is Stephanie, Stephanie and I have had some very similar experiences and some very different experiences, but in combination, we ultimately had the same thing happen to us. With her, she decided to go all in. With me, my body forced me to go all in. We had very different paths to get to those, to those same places, but today I'm gonna to be telling you exactly how that happened. So Stephanie and I experienced the same thing in terms of we grew up having a pretty large appetite and playing sports and being very active um, from you know, a young age all the way until high school. Once I started college, I, be I became somewhat active, um, but I never did any bodybuilding competitions or did extreme cuts. I would do just your everyday average diet, but I never partaked in like intense weightlifting for extended periods of time or any show physique or anything like that. So as Stephanie has shared with us, uh, she has taken many years to become extremely lean, compete in these competitions, do really well. She placed first place in the competitions that she entered. And for me, on the other hand, what got me to the point where my body forced me to go all in was fasting for 54 days. So I was under the impression that fasting down to the bone was a good thing to do, right? It's what was being advertised with the snake diet. And at that, in those moments, I was super locked in and believing um, that concept, concept of just fasting down to the bone. So I embarked on a 30 day long journey. I knew that my fast was probably gonna go longer than that. And I ended up going 54 days with no food, no water, just supplementing with salt only. So after 54 days, I experienced somewhat normal hunger because of the fact that my stomach was incredibly uh, shrunken from before and just a little bit of food would make me extremely full. But after a few months, I found it really hard to contain my appetite. I felt like I was getting to those points where I was a bottomless pit, no matter how much I ate, I would never be satiated. I would have days where I didn't have any hunger at all. I felt like my satiation levels were just completely out of whack. Um, I knew that you know the levels of leptin in my body were just not functioning properly in any way. And my body ultimately fought to get back to the set point. All the way there, I was resisting, resisting, resisting. I was getting frustrated, I was getting emotional because I just could not get a grip on my appetite. Stephanie, on the other hand, after some thorough thinking, decided to go on the all-in journey where she just ate until she was completely full. She anticipated to gain weight, to uh, overshoot her set point, and then eventually have normal hunger cues and satiation levels over time and proper le leptin levels. And she anticipated to eventually, you know, not knowing how long it would take, get back to her set point range. I never thought I would ever know what it would feel like not to be hungry all the time. A year ago, I went all in in hopes of fixing that. So as a kid and into my teens, I played sports, I ate a lot, but it became really apparent that my appetite was unusually large. But it wasn't until I decided to compete in a bikini competition in 2014 that my extreme hunger was truly born. And I really wanna to describe to you guys what extreme hunger means because it's going to be the main antagonist of this story. So what I can say about this particular point is that I don't know and I wish that Stephanie would share whether she has or hasn't because that's a huge part of this is if she ever experienced a voice that comes along um, with certain types of eating. And so I felt like I had restricted so much personally that I almost had this overwhelming energy and voice that surrounded me that was telling me to eat and that's how hard my body was trying to get back to its set point range. So extreme hunger is not your normal, I had a late lunch, so I'm hangry kind of hunger. No, no, no. Extreme hunger is a clearly defined phenomenon that you feel like you could just eat and eat 
and eat without ever wanting or ever feeling like you need to stop. So that's exactly how I started to feel. There was this period of time where I was resisting and resisting when it came to not listening to how hungry my body was and that my body truly needed food. And there was just like no, there was never a point of return. Just when I thought that like I was so full and I couldn't eat one more bite for the rest of the day, 10, 15 minutes later, I would be hungry all over again. So good. Like true bottomless pit hunger, like no sense of feeling full. Like you've even forgotten what it feels like to feel full. So I feel like after my fast, it took a year, maybe even longer for my satiation um, to ever like be like work again. I just felt like it was broken. And I was like, how am I ever going to fix this? And luckily, like after time, it, you know, it, I was able to feel satiation again, but it took so long. I totally feel her when she says that she forgot how it felt. And I mean, I'm just so happy to report that it eventually did come back, but I was, I thought there was just no hope of it ever coming back. I thought I had broken that for life. And the only reason you stop eating is because you literally feel like your stomach is gonna pop. But even then you could eat more. And living this way for years can really impact your quality of life and your happiness, which is what was happening to me. So the genesis of my extreme hunger was truly born back when I did a bikini competition because I had a very restrictive prep. Definitely not a flexible approach. It was a hardcore bro prep. So Jeff was doing the 10,000 calorie challenge and he really struggled through that. And the entire time I was watching, I was just thinking to myself, like, I could easily do this. No problem. So just to give you some insight, uh, when I was still not back at my original weight of when I started my fast, I would eat so much food to where, like, two to three pound container of dates, like I could eat that in 24 to 48 hours. Like I was able just to eat nonstop. And like back then, I think I could have had a shot at completing one of these like 10,000 calorie challenges. But like now I don't think that I would actually be able to do that. Um, I think like I could probably barely hit 5,000 on like a week before I'm starting my cycle. Um, but that's just because I'm like right now I'm in such a different place, but when I was, you know, between that time of ending the fast and getting back to my original weight, I think I, that was like the only time in my life where I think I could have actually completed a 10,000 calorie cheat day if I was like put up to the test. Really good. <laughs> I could totally eat that whole pizza. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. You wanna do it for me? So just for kicks and because I genuinely wanted to try it, I did it for my own YouTube channel. It was kind of the thing to do back then and I easily completed it. And and unlike Jeff's <laughs> torturous experience, I thought it was so fun. So I actually discovered Stephanie's page because uh, during fasting times, I always watch like cheat day videos because I find it to be super satisfying. And that's actually how I came across Stephanie Buttermore's page. So I hypothesized that over time, they might help me from feeling so hungry all the time. In retrospect, I don't think that they actually worked aside from maybe just like slightly helping, but ultimately they just weren't good enough to keep me satisfied long-term. So one thing that I did notice is that when I would have those days that were just like ravenous um, and my body was trying so hard to get back to its original weight, um, what I noticed was that like it could happen two consecutive days. Like just because I was so full one day, I would still feel like a bottomless pit the next. Back that I was just sick of it. I was sick and tired of being hungry all the time just so I could be in fitness, like just so I could be successful on this platform. It just wasn't worth it for me anymore. And like, I just couldn't see myself sustaining it long-term. It was the spring of 2019 that I had a chat with Dr. Nicola Rinaldi about hypothalamic amenorrhea. Hi, Nicola. Thank you so much for joining me. I Which is the lack of menstruation for three consecutive months or more. This could be due to under eating, over exercising, stress, genetics, or even a combination of any of those things. So I actually also experienced losing my cycle for three months after um, I was done fasting. What ended up happening was is after three months I got it back and I wasn't at my original weight to begin with. Um, I was still climbing and getting pretty darn close. 
Um, but I honestly remember this very, very strange pivotal moment for me where like for three days, I felt like I had this overwhelming want and like desire to have a child, which has never happened to me before. I felt like it was almost like this weird flick of a switch where my body communicated with me like, okay, we're feeling okay and ready to reproduce again. So the quicker you return to sort of that, to, to fueling your body adequately, the faster things can turn back on again. And this was something that I actually experienced myself back when I competed and I knew a lot of my audience was dealing with it. She had this concept of going all in, so full credit nonstop to Nicola, but her version was eating a minimum of 2,500 calories with no maximum. And from what I understand, this is an efforts to get your period back. But it could fix a lot more than just getting your period back. It can help with brittle hair and nails, feeling cold all the time, feeling tired, and fix extreme hunger. So those are all things that I that I experienced from my 54 day long fast. I lost 70% of my hair. I was extremely cold after the fast to the point where it was like a scene of just how freezing cold I was constantly. I was incredibly weak. I don't recall my nails having um, any serious issues, but like I mentioned, um, those are all symptoms that I also experienced from fasting 54 days your weight comes down with it. And when I say set weight, set weight is not like an exact number. It, it's more like a range that fluctuates throughout your life and is predetermined by your genetics and your physiology. So they would go through this process of weight gain and then weight stabilization, and they would come out the other side with normal hunger and satiety cues and pretty normal eating behavior, no longer feeling that extreme hunger that they used to have. And I wanted that. I wanted that so badly. I would just see that and be like, I want to do that. Like, that's what I need to do. But regardless of how badly I wanted to do this, I was pretty terrified. I had gotten to a point that I was just like, this is who I am on the internet. What's going to happen when that changes? I went back and forth for a long time. Like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to explain it to them and they'll totally understand to, no, they won't understand. This will be a complete disaster. You have no idea what you're doing to, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go all in, but I'm basically going to quit social media so they don't have to watch me go through this. So I can relate also to this like obviously Stephanie has a huge channel. She has, congratulations, 1 million subscribers. But that was something that I struggled with as well because I was going through this time where my body was choosing to go all in, but my mind wasn't. My mind was trying to resist it. And so I was really confused because I was just having this overwhelming voice and energy surrounding me, like telling me to eat and consume to get back to my original weight. And I wanted to share these things that were happening to me but I thought they were so weird and so strange and that no one else was experiencing them. So I totally hesitated to like not share in those exact moments, the things that I was experiencing out of just like fear of like, you know, I'm building up my channel on like showing someone with, with willpower and that's like strong minded and can complete things like not eating for 54 days. So I totally had that struggle as well. And with that decision of, to share or not share. And for me, I wish I would have shared more because I think I could have just helped a lot of people. And I mean, other people are gonna potentially experience it too. So I, I think when you can anticipate that you're going to experience something, it's gonna help you out versus like, I didn't know these things were gonna happen to me. I, no one ever told me. And so now I have the opportunity and the obligation to share with people the potential things that could happen if you fast for too long because I don't want them to happen to you because they have been some of the most challenging moments in my life. In the first week alone, I gained 10 pounds. I honestly tell you that I had actually been all in this whole past week. And it's crazy to look back on because after I gained the first 10 pounds, and I had to tell you guys, I felt so bad about my body. And in retrospect, I see that person, that one week all in Stephanie, and she was still super tiny. So what's interesting about this is that people think like it's impossible to gain weight really quickly, but when you restrict for a period of time, your body will hold weight like crazy. Like I remember there was a period of time where I gained 20 pounds in two weeks and it just happened so quickly and so abruptly. It was like, it, it was just, I mean, I could not have ate that many calories in that period of time because my stomach had, was still pretty shrunken, 
Um, but I mean, that just tells you like how bad that your body wants to hold on to that weight that you can gain so much in such a short period of time. But the beginning, it was this new exciting adventure that I was on. And I started out in my first month abiding by a 75% whole foods rule. So what's interesting about this is that like, like Stephanie's a foodie, right? Like we're both totally foodies. So she just enjoyed and ate up like this opportunity to just eat wherever she, whatever she wanted. And I was going through that same phase in my body trying to go through the same process, except I had all this guilt and all this shame about these cravings I was having and the food that I was eating, which got me nowhere, you know? So it's like, if I would have seen something like this, you know, and that would have happened to me, I could have just kind of like, just let the reins go and given my body the opportunity to like make its own choices and not try to resist it so much and just know that my body is doing what it can to survive. Man, I was eating the most amazing food. I ate amazing food in Melbourne and I ate whatever was put in front of me at our Airbnb in Bali by two lovely chefs that we had. This is one thing that was actually the worst during this time was my swelling. This is when the puffiness really started. The swelling was everywhere, but I think it was really obvious in my face, my midsection and my ankles. So I completely experienced the same thing. Like you could see at certain times um, when I was starting to gain the weight back, just how much swelling I had in my face. And it would be like literally one meal and my ankles would just swell like crazy and out of control. And it happened like within three to five weeks of ending my, um, my fast. It happened months later. I was always struggling with my ankle swelling. Uh, my hands would swell constantly and then my face was also super swollen so there's like period of times where you could totally see my body retaining a ton of water and that's just something that i experienced as well and also sweat like i was just, like and kind of still am uh, at certain moments just super hot and super sweaty to the point where it's uncomfortable so you go from like this free like being freezing cold to being so sweaty and there's just like no comfortable in between if I had a definitive swollen phase, it started in month two and went through, man, like probably month six. And my swollen phase directly correlated to my sweaty phase. So I was swollen, inflamed, and hot and sweaty. So one thing that I can say is that I, when I think about that period of time where I was resisting my body, trying to eat and gain all that weight back, I like... Anytime we have traumas in our life, we try to erase them, remove them, and forget them, right? So for me, I don't have like a ton of memories on the timeline line of things. Could I go back and look at my YouTube videos and probably figure some things out? Yeah, definitely. Do I want to relive it? No, not exactly. So one thing I can't comment on is if like her and I experienced things at similar times all the time weight and my appetite and weight gain were actually very linked as i gained more weight my appetite decreased with it in tandem so i just used my weight as a visual metric this was actually a really hard time for me my weight was the highest i had ever seen it on a scale in my entire life and i was having pretty regular breakdowns at this point i just felt so badly about myself and if there was ever a time that i wanted to quit and hide away from social media maybe even start dieting so i didn't feel so big it was six months in and I so what i can remember is that there was there's like this huge gap in my social media where i like took it, like no photos of myself like i did not want to be seen i kept to myself and if I look back, it actually was probably about six months after I ended my fast. So similar to, to, Stephanie's, to Stephanie's time frame, where I was just mentally a mess. And I felt so mentally, like my body felt so weak that my mind started to feel weak. And for the first time in my life, I was terrified for my mental health. And I'll never forget this exact moment when I was at the gym back in Puerto Rico, and I was probably like eight steps from the trash can. I was approaching it to get the spray to like wipe down the machine I was just on. And in that exact moment, I just felt so much fear for my mental health 
and my overall well-being and I just did not know what to do. I didn't know how to solve this problem and it felt like there was no end and I just remember feeling in such a low dark place and not just like feeling like I didn't know what to do because I didn't like no one told me that I was going to be experiencing the things that I did and I just felt so much stress that I just remember sometimes like going to bed and being like oh it's been such a hard challenging day like it would just be so peaceful and so freeing if I didn't wake up in the morning and I was getting comments telling me that I was obese now and that my journey was a failure. Phase one, you're really hungry and there's a lot of weight gain. Phase two, you're less hungry and your weight hits a plateau, so it doesn't move for a few months. And then phase three, you're less hungry than phase two and your weight actually starts to decrease towards your set weight. And that can take like however long. So what I can like relate to when it comes to these three phases is that like I totally experienced phase one. Um, I was super hungry and I was gaining weight really, really rapidly in this phase two. Definitely less hunger and then you like get back to, I got back to the weight that I was before I started the fast. And for me, I feel like there's a phase in between two and three um, where I my body overshot. So like it stayed at that original weight for some time and then when it felt safe again, then it kind of overshot it and then there's that three where I definitely experienced less hunger and then my, my weight started to decrease just because I wasn't eating nearly as much as before. You're less hungry than phase two and your weight actually starts to decrease towards your set weight and that can take like however long. Um, but I've always done that. I just ate until I felt full and then I would stop. But since February, my appetite has been pretty low, low relative to how it used to be. So I know I mentioned that at the six month mark, I had a really hard time. So that was probably the time that I really wanted to quit. But trust me, I had way more meltdowns than just that. Like that was just when it was the worst. At the beginning, I think I would have a meltdown like once a week. I had my first one right before I left for that Australia Bali trip and I had a couple in Bali, I'm not gonna lie. So I'll get one time feeling down. So you know that it happens. There's a belt that's supposed to go here, it doesn't fit. And yeah, like at least once a week I would have one. And my goal when I originally started this journey was to improve my energy, fix being cold all the time, feel happier, not be so food focused, and to fix my extreme hunger. And yeah, I did all that for sure. So yes, I solved the extreme hunger issue. Yes, I became less cold. Um, but it was just all of the things that like my body wanted, to, you know, my body just felt comfortable again. Those are all things that are just like telling us that our body feels comfortable all over again. And there was definitely like this like desire for me to be happy. And I totally questioned that along the way. Like, can I be happy and have this like certain physique that, that I'm currently desiring? or does that not exist? Is it one or the other, or can I have both? And it was really hard for me to believe that I could have both. This journey was one of the scariest things I've ever done, mostly because there was just so many unknowns, which is exactly why I'm so happy that I documented it. And I couldn't have done it without you. You guys helped me through some of the darkest times I went through this past year. And I don't think I could possibly describe to you how much of an impact you've made on my journey. I can totally relate to this because I did des decide to share some of the hard, mo most challenging times. And it was definitely not well received because I had had so many people that followed me because of the snake diet. And so people were, you know, they were first a, you know, snake diet fan and then two, like maybe a Mariah fan until things started failing. And I didn't have these videos with these messages that fit their, you know, want 
and desire for me to talk positively about fasting. And I began to question fasting and whether it was the right thing to do or not. And so it was scary in those moments to share videos. I feel like I would post them and then just run like two miles away out of just like fear of my computer just blowing up out of, you know, from negative responses. But at the same time, people shared with me their journeys and they felt like it was okay to share with me that they were experiencing the same things. And in those moments, I didn't feel alone. And um, I felt like I was going through the things that I was going through with someone else. And I found, found comfort in knowing that I wasn't the only person experiencing the things that I was. I think I'm a more improved version of my previous self. I think I've evolved a lot this past year. And I really hope that you guys will stick around um, to see how the rest of this journey unfolds. And I know it's only been a year, but I definitely think I'm on the right track. And I can just see that light growing brighter and brighter every single day. Before I know it, I'm just gonna be living my life, like not thinking about food or my next meal or maintaining a lean physique because the internet or society wants me to. Those days are in the past and I've never been happier. I think those are the perfect words to end on because I feel the same way. I think about the times where I struggled to ever like just feel joy. Like I was so confused that things have brought me so much joy in the past, you know, after fasting that period of time where my body felt like it was so deprived and unsafe that like it didn't have the energy to feel joy. That was not on my body's priority list to ever feel joy or happiness. The good thing about getting your body in a place where it feels comfortable and it feels safe is that you get to feel all the emotions, you get to have all the happiness because unfortunately our body prioritizes those things last, but I would say when you reach them, you know your body's in a good place. Although Stephanie and I had two very different journeys there was a lot of similarities in terms of things that we experienced uh, from a mental and physical perspective. And so I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you wanna catch more videos. And until next time, go out there and create a life that you love.